Kind of looks like he wants to offer you this dart. Do you accept? Hey folks, it's Brett. And you may not be surprised to hear this, but some of my favorite Nerf products are not actually toy blasters at all. Sure, Nerf is synonymous with pew pew, foam flinging fun, but some of the most important ones for me are some of the originals, like the Nerf ball. It does it all. And it's lived on my shelf for a long, long time. Arguably, there is no modern nerfing without the Nerf ball, the world's first indoor ball. I actually do have two of these, but I only have one box. So let's just pretend this is my favorite. I haven't looked inside the box for a while. I'm glad this thing has survived because this kind of Nerf foam is um, delicate at this point. And while this might be the original 1969 Parker Brothers Nerf product, it certainly wasn't the last foam product that would come out within the next decade. And while I've been aware of a lot of those products for many years, none have had the same appeal as the original Nerf ball. But one has silently made little cameos here and there over the years, ever since I got this shirt. Nerf Man. Official Nerf Man Flying Hero t-shirt. A friend told me about this, so I'll share the link in the description as well if you want to get one. I'm not, like, sponsored by them. I just found that this existed and I bought the shirt. I don't know if they had an official title for this line that came out in, like, 1976 or 1977, but they're packaged in a very similar way and they're all included in the same catalog. Nerf Rockets. Look at that. I lied. We're already into foam blasting. Parker Brothers Safe, Soft, Indoor Rockets, and Launcher. We've also got a few different types of Nerf Gliders. They're safe, soft airplanes that fly indoors. A few different colors and options here. A little packaging differences too. You've even got some Nerf Classic Fighters. Animals, critters, and a circus train. So these were ones that you could put together as a little circus train or just have them rolling around on their own. Eat your heart out, Hot Wheels or Nerf Nitro. You got beat by critters. Oh, looks like I jumped the gun. We've got Nerf Mobile. We've got cars and trucks. Okay, so maybe this is more accurate to compare against Nerf Nitro. You can see at this point, the packaging is very similar to like the Nerf ball. You've got that one display window so you can actually see what's in the front. So it made sense for a good display option. We've also got Nerf footballs because we've always had something tied into sports, just like the Nerf hoop basketball. And there it is again, the Nerf ball, the first official indoor ball that's made of soft and spongy, lightweight synthetic foam. And then we've got, what is this? The Super Nerf Ball. I swear I've heard of this before, but I never actually looked into it. The giant version of our popular Nerf Ball, made of the same lightweight synthetic foam, seven inch diameter. Oh my God, it's ginormous. Great for Nerf soccer, volleyball, kickball, you name it. Okay, so it's like, it's a little bit bigger. Yeah, but I don't know if it's gonna fit those sports that they're talking about, but sure. And of course, last but not least, the flying hero we all deserve. Nerf Man. He won't scratch or hurt anything. He's made from durable Nerf foam. He's Nerf Man, the soft, safe superhero who can fly anywhere indoors, even around corners, depending how you move his arms or throw him. Comes with soft winged cape and special decals for eyes and chest, making him a super favorite for ages four to nine. For years, I dreamt of a hero that could save this dreadful hobby. The truth is he's been here all along. And this video is an excuse for me to buy one. <laughs> Behold the Nerf Man. For a toy that's been around for well over 40 years, you can actually find quite a few options for buying yourself a Nerf Man. The ones that are new in package are going to cost you probably closer to $200, about that $150 to $200 price range. If you literally just want a Nerf Man, you can find a few of them for quite cheap. Granted, they may not have the cape, and the stickers may be in questionable quality. Actually, the foam itself might be in questionable quality. If you want to test those flying capabilities, I don't know if you want to break out a brand new in-package Nerf man just to play around with him like that. That doesn't seem financially responsible. And since this guy is out of the package, let's take a closer look. You can see that 40 plus years has given this some wear and a little bit of tear, but I'm overall still happy with my purchase. It was exactly as described. And you can see with the darts I have surrounding here, some of the relative sizes. So like here's a standard elite dart, just in a different color. You can in fact hold it. Means half darts are also no problem. The new N series darts, I guess work too. You got some ultra. Uh, Mega XL is the same size as his arms, so we're, we're not gonna get the same kind of luck there. A lot of the cheapest Nerf Man listings don't include the cape, so I'm glad that I found one that did for a reasonable price. You can see there's been a little bit of wear, of course. There's a bit of a crease on, uh, actually, <laughs> both sides to be honest. A little bit of staining as well. 
flip it over. It's a little dirty back here. Could do a little bit of cleanup. This is at least a little bit of a more resilient foam. The Nerf Man itself, I'm not sure how much cleanup I would want to attempt because this is obviously very spongy and I don't know how much more it can take in its uh, delicate little life. The mask is still in place. You can see maybe there's a little bit of staining on the face as well. The Nerf Man logo, a little mushroom cloud on the center, obviously has a bit of a chunk taken out. This is now very brittle, so I want to be very careful about uh, manhandling it. But it's still there, and it's still firmly attached to the body. Both arms, of course, can be fully rotated. Not concerned about any wear and tear there. And I noticed this on a lot of listings too. You can see the legs will start to curl in one direction. This one is no different. It also seems like just based off of a quick inspection, you don't even need to measure it. These legs are different thicknesses, right? Like that's not down to whoever owned it. Whoever or whatever made this cut for the two legs definitely got a thicker right leg than the left leg. Maybe if I check more listings, I can see if that was a manufacturing feature. But as a result of this curl to the left, it does make it harder for him to stand on his own without a little bit of uh, assistance from the cape, which, yeah, now having these corners bent a little bit becomes a bit trickier. So it really does help if you have something that he can lean up against. And you see, Mega XL coming in for the rescue. Actually, that'd make a pretty funny jetpack. Put a few darts back here and he can really fly. I'm sure the overall green color to the Nerf Man has changed over time, but I don't have an original in package that has not been exposed to too much sunlight to compare and contrast to, and probably take the catalog listings as proof that that has indeed happened. And for those wondering, here's what a jolt looks like next to Nerf Man. Kind of hard for him to actually hold it though, but here's what Nerf Man can probably hold. The world's smallest Nerf Blasters. A blaster fit for the Nerf Man. Oh, we could get both. With a little assistance, we've got Nerf Man with a Nerf long shot. Ever so carefully holding that Nerf long shot, but you know what? It works. <laughs> I'm happy with this. I'm kind of torn. Part of me wants a good, high quality Nerf Man new and packaged so I can display, but I don't know if this is the best way to do it. And so that's why I kind of wanted to get one out of package so I could move him around. But I also don't want to like completely ruin this guy because he is still in pretty good shape. Those who know about Nerf Man are definitely willing to cash in. Like, check out this listing. No, you're not looking at a box with the invisible Nerf Man inside. You're looking at an original Nerf Man 24 unit box from Parker Brothers, and that's it. And that box, the box, which isn't even in great condition, I would argue, is going for $125. Boy, that would be a pretty dumb purchase, wouldn't it? It would. No, this is not the part where I show you that I bought the empty box. What's it going to come in, too? A bigger box? Actually, I sure hope it would, because if it came just in that box, that would suck. Yeah, it's a 1970s cardboard box, and I guess if you're really attached to Nerf Man, this might be worth it to you. I don't know who I'm talking to in this case, but I found that really funny when I was searching for Nerf Man products. So I'm really curious if you're watching and you happen to be around when some of these products came out in the late 70s, what did you think about them back then? More importantly, what do you think about them now? Now that we're hitting almost that 50 year mark, are you sad that you didn't pick them up? Uh, because if I didn't mention the prices, uh, here you are. Is that $2.50 for a Nerf Man? Oh boy. And if you are on the younger side, would you be at all interested in these kinds of products making a return one day from Nerf? Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more Nerf Man. Maybe I could run him in a war one day. I could do that, couldn't... Oh, I could... The Nerf ball and then the Nerf man... I'm gonna think about this for a little bit and I'll see you later. You just need one tag. Just get me one tag and then you can go back to your shelf forever. No more flying. Your flying days are over.